Hey, what's up everybody? This is Matt here and I decided I wanted to make a video by myself because I am right now in the process of doing some reading as much as I can. And I've been following Janine every which way, listening to all the people on YouTube who make those videos about what they do in their lives and what they read. So I thought today on this Halloween day, as I'm filming this, I would be interested in showing what I've got for you and what I actually have been reading this fall. Now, first of all, it's an usually warm day for October outside. The temperatures are like in the 70s right now with some sunshine. And that's why I'm also wearing my favorite light color wear a polo shirt right here. <laughs> And I'm gone with the light gray collar. So, no Halloween costume intended. But lately, when I've been reading, has been a couple of pieces of work by British author Sarah Durant here. And I think this one, what I got right here, The Birth of Venus, is really one of the first of those uh, novels that she introduced to readers alike because. What changed her was this visit to Italy where she was learning about the days of the Renaissance, which would have taken place during the 1490s or thereabout. And that was really during her time when she was about 50 years old and reaching the midlife stage, which to some of her extent would have been what would be considered the midlife crisis in her life. But in this book right here, The Birth of Venus, they describe it as very brilliantly written, where it has exciting at times and equally, what they say, poignant. But this is about a girl about 15 years old or a little before, when Alessandra Sicci has her father bring back a painter who is from Northern Europe, where they, where the family goes to their Florentine palazzo in their, or their church. So this writer has a good talent for the drawings involved. And going to Italy would involve all kinds of ancient uh, texts and writing on the walls to really describe the Renaissance feel. So the relationship gets a little bit in the way when Alessandra gets arranged to meet a much wealthier, older man who would have been described as maybe being with someone at that point called a courtesan. And that is someone who would be in that prostitute category, but involved with being in the, the rich and having a life with the wealth and further beyond. So things get a little bit uh, up and down during this book. I'm only on page 100 right now reading, but I'll get around to more within this next week or so. Another book I read from Sarah Durant was, I think, what my mom used to have called The Company of the Courtesan, which really describes a definition of what that type of woman would have been like during that period, who was what I described. And this woman's name is Fiametta Bocicci, I think. That's how I pronounce it. And the writer of this, who is in a style third person called Buccino, is the one who he's in love with, this woman. And they go through all kinds of adventures, like kind of uh, a little bit of the war. I mean... At first thought, they may have gone missing after their voyage at sea. However, they are still found and they still have to adjust to their lifestyle in Florence, Italy. And there are three parts in that book during a couple of different periods during the 16th century. And they really kind of describe their, their nationality and what life is like, especially during those who are at war. Whereas the birth of Venus, when you think about that, 
you would think of the famous drawing by Michelangelo during the 15th century, which has that woman all riled out and fully nude and covering with hair, looking like the goddess that we all know. But there's a lot more to really come to say that went on during the making of this book that Sarah Durant describes. So what I like about learning about those ancient Roman days is how real the climate there is mostly of the time sunny and they would get some rain occasionally and winters would be very mild. Plus they would learn the process of old fashioned cooking like on a fire, like a roast pig. And I also learned that since I've been learning about how raisins have been made out in California, those date back to those ancient times of what they were eating, which is those dried grapes in the sun. Now, some think that raisins would have been made commercially starting like in the 19th century when they had those grapes and the dry sun to preserve those natural sugars. But that is not a piece of history because that really takes it a, a little bit to modern times when we have the raisins that we eat today, the Seelis brand, in boxes. And believe me, I've been eating raisins since I was just about maybe a year old in my breakfast cereal. So that gives you a couple of points, doesn't it? And Sarah Durant in her life during the 2000s has really made some beautiful craft work in other kinds of areas, like The Birth of Venus, which I'm reading right now, and The Company of the Cursed. And I think I first remember when I saw that book, when my mom had it in our old house in Burlington, Massachusetts, but I never really read the book. And until recently, we thought maybe our work of Sarah Durant and that book we had ourselves, G and I, in our apartment here, we should have donated it uh, to Savers. But somehow when I found out that I really like learning about those Mediterranean times and the Renaissance, it brings back uh, those good times and it follows something that I should be aware of in, as a piece of history. But another thing that I like about learning about Italy is obviously my mom's side of Janine's family comes from the times when they were born in Italy and then they came to America as migrants in their first generation. So I, th there's a lot more I could say about that, but I'm going to go on right now to another book that I just finished reading today. And this one is called Peyton Place. And it was written by a girl named Grace Metaleo in 1956. And what this book really describes is life in a small town in New Hampshire during like the 1930s and the 1940s. And it's divided into three different kind of stories. The first one in a time period is the between the fall of 1936 to the summer of 1937. And these are a couple of girls named Allison McKenzie and Grace Cross. I uh, know Selena Cross, I, I beg your pardon, who are friends in eighth grade. And they seem to have what eighth graders sometimes find as a turning point in their adolescent life. Sometimes they just wish they could get away from their days of being a child and sometimes getting into almost being a young adult. Because when these girls turn about 13 or 14 years old, then they start thinking about men their age that could attract them in their life. And, and it happens one evening when, during Allison's birthday party, that they're playing a game called Spin the Bottle at uh, someone's house and what happens is the turn main point is when Allison ends up having a kiss with this little boy named Rodney Harrington 
And Rodney is the son of Leslie Harrington, who is one of those uh, people in the town of Peyton Place that people are trying to uh, mention at very times when things go wrong. And Rodney Harrington, unfortunately, makes Allison feel a little bit unhappy after Allison gets an unexpected kiss in during the party. And for Allison, it was her first kind of real experience on the verge of sex, which we should not prepare for. Because when you're 13 or 14 years old, that is a point where, first of all, normally that's the age where the young would experience their puberty stage. So in that stage, when you can learn about the benefits of your private parts in your body, but having that first bit of sex, then you could have gotten away with it. But today, that just is not very appropriate in my standards. And it's too young. So things go uh, up to that point in pain place where that is a mix of that kind of feeble love story at first. And Selena Cross has a nice little brother who is a little bit reluctant and shy to talk at times but the real person that the town is after is selena's stepfather named lucas cross who is this kind of jerk who many describe as kind of very drunk and kind of aggressive and she hits on selena quite a bit in terms of child abuse and i can see why Girls like Selena would suffer from that very efficiently. Because during the night, that those early points, when you have those terms of abuse, you would think that your parents would punish you by slapping and spanking and hitting you with a whiplash. So under today's standards, that is painful to me. And boy, I could never get away with anything that would have ever been so vile as that. So at the end of the first story, then the class of 1937 in middle school graduate without uh, seeing it being done. But then the second story is where it's two years later and July is very hot and dry. And much of the town is really in desperate need of rain. And it doesn't come until the very end of this story where it is the Labor Day Carnival at Payton Place. However, the real nuisance here is Selena Cross once again gets into another fight with her stepfather, Lucas. And after Selena goes through some tough times and visits the doctor, then the doctor named Matthew Swain tells Lucas he has to leave Peyton Place and everything behind so the town could be a little bit more safe again. But what also happens is Allison McKenzie ends up going off with Norman Page, who is the son of Evelyn Page. And they both have a nice little time right by the lake and both parents are very worried for them. But when they finally found out that they are found and have been wait, making them wait for a while, that is when Constance and Evelyn are very angry at their children. And Allison is so shocked, especially because now that Constance McKenzie, the mother, is trying to find herself back in the love relationship, especially with this Greek gentleman named Thomas Marcus, who has visited Peyton Place twice now. And Allison ends up going to the hospital to rest and recover with the help of Matthew Swain. However, what the town searched for was more than that feeble coincidence because of the fire ranging around. And another fact that to bring up was that Selena's mother named Nellie Cross ended up hating herself due to the fact that she was worried that she was going to die 
due of cancer that she had. Selena admits uh, that maybe it was her fault that she killed her mother, but she didn't want to bring the town into that conclusion because she was so scared. But the second book ends with a high note, with Alice finally getting her joy back after she goes on the funhouse. And finally, in the third book, this is where it takes place in between the fall of 1943 to the summer of 1944. And by then, of course, America is in with the rest of the Allies in World War II. So it's a very tough trying period for Peyton Place again. But this is where Selena Cross is held trial of, because once again, she is accused of killing another family member. And in this case, when her stepfather, Lucas Cross, came back because he was in a Navy uniform, he was in such to meet her da his daughter again, and Joey, who was in grade school. However, they both admitted that Lucas ended up being buried underneath the snow that came early in 1943. So the trial uh, in the town goes and finds out who is guilty and responsible for the killing of Lucas Cross. But at the result, as it may seem, Selena ended up applying guilty and ended up going to jail for her such act. But Lucas Cross, now without him, the town felt like it was safer from such abuse and such poverty. So it ended up being that Allison ended up going to New York City because she ended up getting a job for when she was a writer. And when her stories were, were not kind of uh, lawful or were recognizable under the name David, who was in New York City at that time, then Allison just realized that being back in pain place with her mom just gave her something to look after because, after all, it was a fictional town that I read. Based And it was based on this fictional person in it named Samuel Payton. It was based on his trip to France and when he lived in a castle at the time of how the town got its name. But everything that Grace made up in this book, even though the town was fictional, her town of Gillington, New Hampshire, is right in that kind of area that kind of reminds me of rural life in New Hampshire. And since I've been walking around areas where I've been flagging, and ever since my days I went off to New England College, I have had a good sensibility of whenever I come to a small town in New Hampshire or Maine about what it's like, especially during the older days when we had Grocery, general stores, convenience shops, churches, and diners. Unlike what the supermarkets that we have on the outskirts of town today. And, and also the malls and stuff like that. But I think uh, it grew as a controversy when we talked about the terms of child abuse and sex in this book. And it really sounded scandalous when Grace wrote it. But it changed the nation for, for the good time being. But my point on reading the book was where I found that those old days and living in New England were kind of just what they were more quiet with a smaller population. And it was like everyone knew your name. That's not true where I am right here in Portland because we have a bigger population. So... So also, I want to explain that I'm going to be, with Janine, making another video that will be talking about my thoughts on the book. And we're going to be talking about our final wrap-up for the month of October and bring up some other issues that are serious issues that we've been tackling in the media. Normally, Jean has been doing this on books that she has read from suggestions from the YouTubers that she has been listening to, but this is my first attempt to really describe it in my own way. So if you can see me now, if you've never read Paint Place or 
Sarah Durant's work, then if you can find out for yourself and give me a couple of other thoughts or something, you can leave a note on my comments in my video that I post. So I hope everyone has a good rest of the fall and don't eat too much candy and save room in the next coming weeks for Thanksgiving. So continue to go outside, see the fall foliage. And if you ever go to a nice little town in New Hampshire, Maine, just think about all those times when people were living and sort of knew each other. So thanks you very much.